Imagine a world where consciousness is not a mystery, where evolution has intentions, and where free will exists within determinism. This is the world of philosopher Daniel Dennett. Dennett, born in Boston, Massachusetts, has been a prominent figure in the realm of philosophy for over half a century. His studies at Harvard and Oxford laid the foundation for a career marked by a deep dive into the intricacies of mind, science, and biology. Dennett's work seeks to demystify the profound, to make the complex comprehensible. His ideas have challenged, enlightened, and at times even provoked the philosophical community. In the sphere of philosophy of mind, he has reimagined consciousness. In the philosophy of science, he's proposed that evolution is driven by more than mere chance. And in the philosophy of biology, he's dared to suggest that free will and determinism are not mutually exclusive. Dennett's philosophy is a journey into the heart of our complex existence, a journey that begins with the concept of intentionality. Dennett's first big idea is the intentional stance, a method for predicting behavior. This approach is a breath of fresh air in the philosophical world. It's all about attributing beliefs and desires to things, whether they're humans, animals, or even machines. Imagine you're playing chess against a computer. You could try to understand all the complex algorithms and calculations it uses to make its moves, or you can simply assume that the computer desires to win and believes the best way to do so is to put your king in checkmate. You're using the intentional stance. The intentional stance is an invaluable tool in predicting behavior, but it also presents a challenge to traditional views on consciousness. It suggests that consciousness isn't a prerequisite for having beliefs and desires. A chess computer isn't conscious, but we can still predict its moves by attributing beliefs and desires to it. This concept doesn't stop at computers. We can apply the intentional stance to everything around us, from animals hunting for food to plants reaching for sunlight. It's a radical shift from our usual perspective, but it opens up a whole new way of understanding the world. The intentional stance, therefore, provides a unique lens through which to view the world. A lens that brings us to Dennett's second big idea, the theory of evolution. Dennett's second big idea is an intriguing take on the theory of evolution, a concept that has sparked endless debates and discussions. Evolution, in the eyes of Dennett, takes on a rather unique perspective. He posits that evolution is not a conscious entity with a grand plan or a specific path laid out. Instead, he sees it as a blind, algorithmic process that operates devoid of purpose or direction. Imagine an artist who paints without a preconceived image in mind, adding strokes of color here and there, letting the canvas evolve organically. That's how Dennett envisions evolution, a painter without a blueprint, creating masterpieces out of chaos. But how does this blind, directionless process give rise to the complex structures we see around us? The human brain, the wings of a bird, the intricate web of an ecosystem. These are not the products of chance, surely. Dennett would argue otherwise. He contends that complexity can indeed arise from simple, purposeless processes given enough time. In essence, he is challenging the notion of a grand designer. According to Dennett, the complexity we see in nature is not the result of a conscious design, but the outcome of countless iterations of trial and error, a testament to the power of evolutionary algorithms. Thus, Dennett's take on evolution paints a picture of a world without a grand designer, a world that leads us to his third big idea, consciousness. Dennett's third big idea is a groundbreaking explanation of consciousness. This concept is a fascinating exploration into the intricacies of the human mind. Dennett postulates that consciousness is not a singular entity or a mysterious enigma waiting to be unraveled. Instead, he suggests that it's an amalgamation of various mental capabilities. Picture a symphony orchestra where each musician plays a different instrument yet they all come together to create a harmonious melody. Similarly, consciousness, according to Dennett, is a composition of various mental abilities that work in sync to create our perception of reality. This challenges the traditional notion of consciousness as a unified entity, opening up new avenues for understanding the human mind. Dennett posits that consciousness is not a problem that requires a solution, but rather a range of phenomena that need to be explained. He encourages us to delve into the many aspects of consciousness, 
from our ability to perceive and understand the world around us to our capacity for introspection and self-awareness. Each of these abilities, Dennett argues, contributes to the overall phenomenon we call consciousness. His theory, while complex, invites us to reevaluate our understanding of the mind, prompting us to question and explore the many facets of consciousness. And this innovative perspective on consciousness paves the way for Dennett's fourth and final big idea, a concept that bridges the gap between free will and determinism. Dennett's explanation of consciousness invites us to reconsider our understanding of the mind, leading us to his fourth and final big idea, compatibilism. Dennett's fourth big idea is a reconciliation of two seemingly incompatible ideas, free will and determinism. Now, you might be wondering how the two could possibly coexist. Well, Dennett is a compatibilist, a stance that suggests free will and determinism can indeed harmoniously coexist. Dennett argues that we can still make genuine choices that matter, despite living in a universe where every event, including our own choices, is the result of prior events. This is where his notion of free will comes into play. While our choices may be influenced by past events, they are not necessarily determined by them. You see, Dennett doesn't view free will as the ability to do anything at any moment. Rather, he sees it as the capacity to make choices that are genuinely ours, choices driven by our desires, beliefs, and rational deliberations. In a deterministic universe, our past may shape us, but it does not control us. We are not mere puppets on the strings of causality. Our will is not an illusion but a reality, a product of our complex intentional nature. And there you have it, a fascinating perspective that reconciles the seemingly incompatible. There's a certain elegance to Dennett's compatibilist view, don't you think? In the philosophy of Daniel Dennett, we find a world that is complex, intentional and free, a world where philosophy meets science and where big ideas can transform our understanding of reality.